Today on The Girl to Find Show, we are talking about how to discern a guy's true character. I mean, let's be real. When you are in the dating phase, there is nothing more terrifying than dating a guy and wondering like, okay, is he actually who he says he is? And if oh, you've yeah. been through a breakup and you're like, the man he said he was at the beginning turned out not to be who he is. And it's a very painful process, which both of us have been through in our past. And it is just mm-hmm. like the trash cans. It is the worst. And so we want to help you with practical tools to know how can I just a guy's true character and if you're married we want to give you tools to mentor and help the single women around you like help a single girl out yes. <laughs> so from our own painful past experiences here is some practical advice that if you are single or dating you really need to know Hey, sisterhood, it is Kristen and Bethany here. Woo! Welcome back to another episode of The Girl Defined Show. We are so glad you're here with us. And like Bethany said, if you're single or actually if you're dating or you want to be dating or you have your eye on a guy, this is an episode for you. Ow! And then for all of you married women who are like, oh, this isn't really for me, this is just as much for you because how many times do your single friends come to you yeah. and say, what do you think? What do you think about this guy? Do you see any red flags? Do you see any problems? Hopefully they're coming to you or just saying, like, yeah. do you have any advice? You know, a single girl who's not dating, she sees you're married, she respects you and she's like, hey, what advice would you have for me? What do you tell her? And is it rooted in God's word? Or are you like, I don't really know what to say. I just pull from personal experience. This will give you the tools to help mentor women. And then if you're single or dating, this will give you a vision for what to actually be looking for, what kind of questions to be asking. And we are not only going to give you this episode, but we have an amazing PDF that we created, literally titled How to Discern a Guy's True Character, a Sayar Practical and Biblical Guide. We created this because we have received this question over and over again, and we have faced this in our own dating relationships before we were married. And honestly, I wish that I had had some of these tools much sooner in my dating. Not that I dated a ton of people, but it would have been helpful. You were a serial dater. You were just all over the (laughs) place. All over the place. Even before (laughs) dating, though, like as a younger single woman, before I was even dating, to even be thinking in terms of how to discern a guy's true character, just practicing, knowing what to even look for, it would have been so helpful. You can grab this guide, instant down, instant downloadable PDF, so you can get it right now at girldefined.com slash shop. Just click the digital resources tab and you can grab that today. Girldefined.com slash shop, digital resources tab. But we're going to dive into some of the th- some of the things that we talk about in this PDF because I remember back before I married Zach, I've shared some of this on some of the podcasts, but a guy that I was dating and, you know, I had invested in the relationship. Like we had been dating for almost a year. We were both really into each other. In fact, like marriage, we had talked about that. Um, I knew that he was even to the point of like thinking about shopping for a ring. Like we were very serious, but throughout the dating relationship, there were red flags that had been popping up that were about like things concerning his character. So inconsistencies or things he said he believed about God or loved about God, but then didn't really see that maybe lived out in his life or things he would tell me not follow through, like a whole list of things. But because I was so invested And I was falling in love with this guy. And I thought, well, I'm probably going to marry this guy. I didn't really have discerning eyes to see those things and to say, those are problems. I should talk to someone about this. I should look more into this. I should figure out who this guy really is. And I should be more discerning with his character. I didn't really like I was in that mode, right? Where you're dating and you just don't. Yeah. I don't think you wanted to see it because when you've invested, no, I mean, it's not an offense. I've been there too. Like when you don't, you've invested so much time, energy, the easier thing just feels like to go, no, I'm sure those aren't really concerns. Let me just continue forward and downplay and you minimize because the thought of ending the relationship is too painful to think about to be single again, to be what you feel like is back at square one yeah. after having invested so much time that it's just too much. It's the worst. It's like, no. It is so hard. We have another guy, guide on the Christian Girls Breakup Survival Guide. Also, girldefined.com, digital resources tab, if you're in that place. That is also very oh. helpful. But it is really hard to be in that place of seeing issues as you're trying to discern his true character and then what do you do yeah. with those? So I am so thankful for my mom actually at the time spoke into my life and she just said, hey, can I talk to you? And she shared specific things that were concerns that she had also known noticed about this guy's character. And she just said, you know, I'm wondering if you've noticed these things, what do you think? They seem really concerning to me, problematic. Um, I'm not sure what you think. And it, it's like, as soon as she started sharing those things, it was like she was reading my brain because it was everything that I had already seen and the things that I knew 
knew were not maybe godly and this guy's character not consistent with who he said he was as a man of God. And so long story short, we ended the relationship. I'm so thankful. Yeah. Um, it was heartbreaking and hard and like the hardest breakup I had ever been through. But praise God, God led me down a different yeah. journey to eventually marry Zach, which is, I am so thankful mm-hmm. for him because he truly is a godly man in and out. But learning how to discern a guy's character for yourself and for a, as a married woman to give advice to single women or dating women. This is so incredibly helpful because we need to know what does it mean to actually be a godly man and how do we discern if he Mm -hmm. is or not? Well, and this can cause some confusion too, because I know as soon as this conversation comes up, you're like, okay, well, him and I don't think the exact same on everything. Is Mm. that a red flag? And that's why we're emphasizing character. Like you may have some theological differences. You may have some differences of how you prefer to celebrate holidays. You know, (laughs) you are not going to be the exact same with any man that you marry. And if you think you're hundred percent the same, somebody's probably lying. So there's a problem, but seriously, I mean, Kristen and Zach have differences. Dave and I have differences. Every couple I've ever met in this entire world has differences. That's not what we're talking about. You are going to, if you get married, you're going to marry someone where you're going to say, okay, here are our, here are the hills I'm going to die on and here are the preferences and here are the things that I'm going to kind of be like, okay, we'll do it your way. So we're not talking about that. We're not talking about preferences or differences of opinion. We're talking about the character because if you end up with a man of character who loves the Lord, who has integrity, who is mm-hmm. honest, who is hardworking, who like all of that, then even if you face hardship, even if you face differences, the character that comes with yeah. that man, you'll be able to work through it. Like there are going to be hard times, but you want to end up with a man who has godly character for himself, not just because he wants to be with you, but apart from you, apart from everyone else, he yeah. wants to live for the Lord. That's now, huge. In my life, y'all know I got married at 30, which now is like, seems so young. You know, now that I'm 36, <laughs> I'm like, ah, 30, are you kidding? That's hilarious. And yeah. somehow my husband is still in his 20s. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how old is he at this He's moment? He's 29. We're five and a half years what? apart. So it blows my mind. I'm like, I'm in, I'm 35. I'm almost thinking like in five years, I'll be yes. 40. And then my next big milestone is 50. Like I'm practically in the grave, you know? And I'm like, how is my husband still in his 20s? So he must have been a very young man of godly character when y'all got married. Guess who he must have been in his mid oh, We were both in our 20s when we started dating. Wow. Okay, but... When him and I started dating, I had been through a few serious relationships. And that's just because I, you know, you, I had my first serious boyfriend at 19. So it's like a lot of time before 30 to have relationships. Yeah. Um, and so I had been burned by my naivety. Naivety, is that how you say it? Naivety. <laughs> and just from exactly like Kristen, not wanting to see things, wanting to just shove it under the rug because I'm like, this guy's the last boat off the island. If I- <laughs> him I'm for sure gonna be an old nun granny rocking away my life everyone's gonna be married and I'm gonna live a miserable existence we're all gonna be feeling sorry yeah. for you no. everyone will be like oh Bethany so I was almost of the mindset like better to kind of settle mm. and hold on even though I knew there were so many things that were like problems character problems so many things that didn't line up one thing was said another thing was lived yeah. out over and over and over again but I remember that just being like excuse after excuse like I'm sure because uh, he but the, look at these good things he does you know like yeah. of course it would be easy to spot in a relationship if he were just like a total loser and was like oh, I hate the Lord you know it's like well then that's obvious you know but it's hard these relationships are tricky because he's not just like a hundred percent a big meanie like he he might yeah. treat you really well or you might have a lot of sexual chemistry so you're like I mean how can it really be that bad so that's why we all have to discern because it's hard it's not just straight cut and dry forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when Dave and I, Dave and I had been friends for quite a while, actually, like a few years. And we were just like the most ultimate friends ever. Obviously he was way younger than me. So he was just like my younger brother's friend. And I'm like, (laughs) I don't even notice him. And then Dave and I have different moments where we remember like our actual first conversations. And my first memory of ever talking to him, of having like an actual conversation with him, is at a party, like at my family's house. You know, I say party and people are like, what are you partying know, at the clubs? It's like, no, it's just like a family friendly party where we were playing like, like those a minute game to win a game. Like a game night. Yeah, maybe I should say yeah, game yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. Is that a game night? Is that a game night? And I remember being in my family's kitchen, the house they still live in. And I remember, which I've 
told Dave multiple times. He was like, oh, I know what you're going to say. Like, maybe I should stop saying this. But I remember it being in the kitchen and me thinking in my head, like, oh, this nice guy. Let me let me talk to him and like ask him about his life, kind of like as a ministry, you know. <laughs> and so I remember thinking, like, so tell me more about like what you do. I had no interest and he had no interest in me. And then fast forward that another like year or two and we just ended up spending so much time together. And naturally the spark started to fly. We ended up having so much like interest in each other. And so when he asked me out for our first date, I was super excited and said yes. But I was like, you know, I've been like so burned in the past. I've been so stupid. Like I've stayed in relationships longer than I needed to be. I have not been the best at discerning a guy's true character. I've been an idiot. And so I was like, you know, I'm just going to lay all my cards on the table. I'm just going to tell him what I'm looking for, where I'm going in life, what I'm expecting. And I'm just going to, he's not up for that. I want to scare him away on date so one. So your mindset had really changed from like last boat off the island to like, <laughs> if you're not the one, beat it. I just, I realized like I had wasted so much time yes. staying in these stupid relationships and I just learned so much and I came to the point of saying you know my purpose in life is to live for God and glorify yeah. him and if that means marriage great if that means as a single great like I'd really come to peace with a lot of that mm-hmm. and I actually share a lot about that mindset of learning to thrive as a single in our book Love Defined yes. which is absolutely amazing get it on Amazon get it on our website like if you are in that phase of like oh, singleness yeah. dating Love Defined is epic um, so I really learned a lot through those relationships but I did I came to the point where I was like I don't care like I want to get married, but I am no longer willing to settle because a life of being married to someone who doesn't mm-hmm. have godly character, who doesn't really truly care about fully living for the Lord, like not worth it. You know, like we're yeah. going places in this life, like me and the Lord, we're doing things. And if he's not on board, like out with him, off with your head. <laughs> and so I, I'll read these. I, I need to do a whole episode on this because it's kind of hilarious. But I just, I literally, my phone, I pull up my phone. I had all these questions and all these notes. And I'm like, you know, basically in the middle of the day, like, I've got some thoughts, you know, like, are you ready? And I just start telling him, like, what my focus is in life, where I'm going. I was running Girl Defined with Kristen at the time. So I'm telling him, like, my heart's passion. I'm asking him, like, are you, you know, are are you okay with this? Are you on board with this? You know, this is how serious I am about life. Like, if you're not interested in that, like, beat it, buddy, you know? And so I go through all of these things. And I think he said that when he came to the date, he was mostly... He was surprised that I said yes because he didn't think that I was going to say yes to him. And then he also was viewing it as like, you know, I've only got one date with this girl. I'm going to make it the best I can. So when I came super serious, like, you know, I, I'm really serious about relationships. Yes. He was kind of like, whoa, like, you're much more serious than I was expecting. Like, yeah, let's go, you know. Oh, he, he so, was like actually excited, not shocked. Like, so that's uh, just some encouragement for you to know, like, you don't have to be this just like, oh, okay, I have to be like, have no opinions and just be like, mm. try to make him so happy. It's like, no, a godly man is going to recognize a godly woman and he's not going to be scared away by your convictions. He's not going to be scared away by your intentionality. And if he is, beat it, buster, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> he's got to go all the line. He's got to go. So as you're looking for a godly man of character, you need to make sure that you know, like your own, like, what are you living for mm. as a woman? Yeah, what are, are your you purpose? a godly woman of yes. character? Like what, what do you believe about all yeah. the things we're about to share? Because you need to know that first before you can ask Totally. Him. And if you're not, if you're like, you know, have all of these issues and all of these problems, which we all do at to a degree. But if you're like really wrestling with stuff or you've got a bunch of like secret sexual struggles you're dealing with or some really complicated relationships that you're in the midst of working out, like sometimes it can be hard to be very discerning if you're in the midst of like really dealing with a lot yourself. So I just want to encourage you to make sure first and foremost that you're looking inward and really asking the Lord to refine you and to help you become a woman of God. None of us are ever going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're saying, but just kind of like looking inward first. And then when you're like, okay, you know, I I know, like I do want to live for the Lord. I am not perfect. I need the Lord's strength, but I really do Mm -hmm. want that. When you're in that place, then you can say, okay, now what does it actually mean to for a man to be godly and, and what am I looking for? Yeah. So Okay, let's dive in because you are probably ready to know, well, how do I discern his character? <laughs> no, they want me to talk more. More stories. <laughs> they want more stories. No, it's very interesting. But this actually, so there was a, a, a dating woman that I knew um, and she had come to me for some advice, like it, for her dating relationship. And the guy that she was dating, from what I could observe about him, from what she told me, um, some of the struggles going on in their relationship, his, you know, inconsistency with church and just different things. From afar, I could discern that maybe he wasn't as serious about the Lord as he was telling mm-hmm. her that he was. Okay. And so she was wanting some advice. And it ended up being that she and I actually went over to my pastor's wife's house and we all sat down. And I was just really encouraged 
encouraged by the way my pastor's wife just basically pulled out the Bible and said, okay, you want to know if this guy is godly, if he has godly character, then you have to look at the in the word and basically see what God values and then ask yourself, where does this guy stand with these things? What does he value when it comes to the things that God values? And so basically that was the inspiration many years ago for how this PDF, how to discern a guy's true character came about is basically just asking yourself like, okay, what does this guy that I'm dating, what do his actions, not just his words, because guys and totally. us girls, we can say a lot of things like, oh, I'm very passionate about Jesus and I'm passionate about this and that and God's word and the gospel and the church and purity and all these things. But what does the story of our life and our actions, our choices, what does that actually Mm. reveal about what we value and what we believe even more than what we say? And so it's getting past even just what people say and looking beyond that and saying, okay, is it, is this person consistent with what they say and how they live with what they believe and how they act? And so my pastor's wife basically just started going through, like I said, a list of things that are very important in the Bible, starting with the most crucial one of all, which is salvation, and just asking this woman dating, this young woman saying, well, okay, think about this guy and how do his his actions and his words align with each of the following areas? And the first one that she named was salvation. And she said, do you know for sure that this guy you're dating is a genuine believer mm. in Christ? Does he understand the gospel message that Jesus died on the cross for his sin, was raised again three days later, and that he's the only way to heaven through believing in Christ to have your sins forgiven? Does he believe that? And do his life, does his life display marks of a true Christian? Mm. Like, do you see that in him? Have you had that conversation? I mean, how easy is it for us to, you know, meet someone at church or in a Christian setting or for someone to recommend someone like, oh yeah, he's a great Christian guy. But then you start dating them and you have a lot of fun. You have chemistry like, oh, we really click in these different ways. I'm attracted to him. And you just assume that he understands the gospel totally. and is a genuine Christian because of the circumstances, but you've never really had this conversation. So that was just the first one. We're going to run through a bunch of these. Um, and then again, go grab the PDF, girldefined.com slash shop digital downloads to get this how to discern a guy's true character download so you can have each of these questions and literally read all of them, memorize them. And then as you're dating this guy, start bringing totally. up these questions. But that was the first one. And let me tell you, this this dating, I'm calling her a dating woman because <laughs> she's not a single woman, a woman in a dating relationship. When my pastor's wife started asking her, she could not answer a lot of these questions. She was like, oh, I think so. I mean, I'm pretty sure he understands the gospel, but she didn't really know. And so for her, it gave her a lot of things to take yeah home and to really chew on and to really evaluate like, okay, I can't even discern his true character because I don't even know. Yeah. Like I, we haven't even had half these conversations. So for a lot of these things, they're for you to evaluate as you watch him, as you observe him, as you listen to him, as you hang out with him, but then to also directly ask him as well. Another area that is so crucial is when it comes to church. And you know, if you've been around Girl Defend any length of time, we are very passionate about being proactively involved in a local Bible-believing church. That is something that I think is hugely important for every woman and man, Mm -hmm. no matter season of life. And so looking at his life and saying, does he value church and see the importance of being plugged into a local body, not just with his words, but with his actions and not a million excuses about why he can't Mm -hmm. be there? Does he submit himself to the godly leadership of a biblical church? Does he look for ways to get involved and serve his brothers and sisters in Christ within the body. And this is so crucial, y'all, because we have seen women where they're like, you know, I mean, he's just really busy with work or he's really busy with school. And so I know it's just not a priority, but I know he loves the Lord. I know he wants to be involved in church. They get married and it's not a priority for him. There's always an excuse. There's always a reason. There's always a busy season. And so you have to like proactively make church a priority. It's not just going to happen. We all get tired. We all lose motivation. So it has to be something where you're like, I know this is within God's good design. Like God created the church and that's his good plan for believers Mm -hmm. to live out the one another's, to support, to serve, to learn, to be challenged, to be held accountable, like all of that. He needs that in his life. So do you. So that's a challenge for you too. Are you doing these things that we're talking about? Are you like saying, God, it's hard for me to be in church right now. I'm busy. I've got young kids. I'm in college, whatever it is. And I don't want to, you know, like I don't, I don't want to do this right now, but I know this is your good plan for me. So it's looking inward first, but then being honest about this. And that's what's hard. You know, if you're like, oh, I I just need to turn this podcast off because Mm. this is really like he's not. Don't make excuses for him. That's the last thing you want to do. Like, be honest about this and ask yourself, okay, what is his relationship with church like? Is this something that he's actually proactively involved with? Or is he kind of like, 
uh, like not so much. A churchgoer in name yeah. only, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm very committed in name only. Yeah. Okay. Something that actually isn't in this PDF that I just want to mention really quick is the extremely valuable importance of having a, an older godly woman that you can talk totally. to about this. Because let's say you get this PDF, you download it, awesome. It's helping you think in terms of how to evaluate a guy's true character from a biblical lens. What God values, does this guy value? If not, is this the guy that I want to commit the rest of my life to? Maybe not, or maybe not right now, but to make these huge decisions on your own when you're in that emotional place of being in that relationship invested, you might even feel like you're falling in love with him, like all these things going on, the time you need someone outside of that relationship that you can talk to about this. Just like that young woman I shared about was getting advice from me, from our pastor's wife. Like, how awesome is that? You know, and then you've got to like take that advice and hopefully do good things with it. Like not just discard it, but find a godly woman. You know, we're also very passionate about mentoring here at Girl to Find about discipleship because we see that in Titus 2, that model of older women teaching younger women, linking arms, walking alongside. So if you don't have someone like that in your life, if you're like, you know, my mom, Mom can't really be that person for me for whatever reason. Find a godly woman in your church, a woman that's older than you, that is spiritually more mature than you, a woman who has discerning eyes, who has wisdom, a woman of the word. And even if you don't know her that well, just say, this is something I've been praying about and God really laid it on my heart to ask you if you totally. could be this in my life, if we could meet once a week, I'm getting For to sure. know this guy. Um, but you know, I really want to be discerning about this relationship and being able to bounce things off of you and get your advice and your input, even working through this PDF with her. Yeah. That could be life-changing. That could save you years and years of heartache of marrying someone that is not the person maybe you would have if you had had godly advice from Mm. a godly woman. So just an aside there, a huge aside that is so important. Don't just try to handle this on your own. You need the body. You need a godly woman. Okay, so we've talked about salvation. We've talked about church. Two humongous areas that will help you discern, is this guy that I'm dating really rooted in the word and does he actually love what God loves? Does he understand what God says and what God values about these things? Because he's going to be the man leading your family. And like Bethany said, if it's just in name only, then that's going to be how he is leading your family. Mm -hmm. And that's probably not what you want. Okay. So another huge area is family. Does he honor his parents in the way he speaks to them or the way he speaks about them? Um, This is huge because even if a guy has a really strained or difficult relationship with his parents, um, brokenness, maybe they're unsaved, whatever could be going on, they're divorced and there's been heartache and pain, does he still choose as a godly man to honor them in the way that he speaks about them? Or is it always bashing them, putting them down, gossiping? Obviously, you can share hard things happening in a relationship in a respectful way. It's not just sugarcoating stuff. But does he do it in an honorable way? That's the thing here. Does he respect the leadership that God has placed over him Or did he when he was a young man? What was he like then? Um, You know, is he still that same person? Has God grown him? Has God changed him? Finding out some of these things is super important. How does he handle um, even his relationships with his siblings? You know, if he has siblings, like even if they're not close, does he honor them? Does he care about them? Like looking at how a man treats the family God has placed him in, whether it's been filled with joy or heartache, how he talks about them, how he handles those hard things um, as a godly man now, that will tell you a lot about his character, just being able to observe that and asking those questions. So don't discard some of those things. If you're seeing a lot of red flags, a lot of negative things, then that is kind of like that gives you an insight into his character of how he's going to handle difficult things. And just remember, if you marry him, your marriage will be filled with difficult things and challenges and even heartaches. And you want a man who is going to honor you as you walk through those, not a man who just bashes you when things get hard. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing this so clearly. Um, I was mentoring a young woman and the guy she was dating, it's like, every close person in his life, he had like a big problem with, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like his mom, his dad, his best friend. It was just like, you know, like, girl, you are next on the list. As you get closer to him and as life goes on, he is going to have a big problem with you because that is just his pattern. Like, he seems to have, and and it's not his fault. There's always other people that are close in his life. They are the problem for some reason. And it's a pattern. Like, it's a habit. It's not just, like, difficult relationships. It's like, that is suspicious when Mm -hmm. he is the only one that, from his perspective, seems to be in the right and everyone seems to be in the wrong. And it's hard because these days, there is a huge huge pass for young people to basically talk about all the toxic people in their life. And I think to an extreme degree that is very unhealthy and to basically be very much like 
it, it just like, ah, it's not me. It's just everyone else around me. And yes, there is brokenness. Yes, there are real hard relationships. But it just seems like we've come to this point where if there's disagreement, if you can't, you know, share a similar perspective, if there's political differences, that it's like, this person is toxic and I can't be around them, you know? And it's just like, oh my goodness, you know, what has happened to us? We're like the weakest people of all. Like, ooh, we can't handle any difference of opinions, you know? But it's so approved. It's like, yes, you know, mm-hmm. we will be your family. You know, you they're toxic. Don't be around them. Come to us. And it's it's like, ah, oh, like, woo, that is just a whole can of worms. So I just want you to be really cautious and careful. One, about the way you relate to people that are mm-hmm. close to you. Do you view everyone that's close to you as the problem and you are the only angel of all, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and does he do that? Like, that is that is something to be very cautious and yeah, careful of. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we've gone through a couple. There are many. I yeah. think we should hit on a few more of the big ones. And then again, grab this PDF because this will take you into a deeper dive. But along the lines of family, this is like a little bit different. We see this in Hebrews 13, 7, Romans 13. By the way, there's scripture references. Yeah. We haven't named all of them, but that go with each one of these. So you can find these in scripture. So if you're like, where are they getting this from? What does God's word say about this? We've got the scriptures referenced. So this next one is authority. 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 And this is a huge one because if this man, whether it's his parents, his pastor, his boss, his teachers, if he is struggling to be under any sort of authority, Mm -hmm. then that tells you that this man is most likely going to struggle to be under the authority of God. For sure. Because if he doesn't have ears to learn, to grow, to listen, to be under authority, to respect the people that God has placed above him, even in difficult work situations, you know, I get it, like that happens. Um, Difficult situations, like maybe he's in the military and it's like he doesn't like the people above him. Whatever it is, like how is he responding to that authority that God has placed over him? Is he always bad-mouthing them, always pushing against, always blaming people? It's always their problem, their fault. He would be the better leader. He would make better choices. Like, is there any humility that you're seeing in him when it comes to the authority God that God has placed over him? Is there any level of respect where he can say, I don't agree with this, but this is where God has placed me and I'm going to show honor and I'm going to still give 100%. I'm not going to whine and bash these people and speak poorly of them. I am going to still give my best. I think looking at how a man responds to authority, the earthly authority that God has placed over him is a huge indicator Mm -hmm. of where his heart is at and how he's going to respond to God. Because God has a lot more to say to us and a lot more that he is calling us to submit to him in than probably all of our earthly authorities combined. Like the entire Bible is called, is, is God's instructions to us for the Christian to know who God is, to worship him above all else and to submit to him, to say, not your will, God. I mean, not my will, but your will be done. That's the wrong takes, thing that's to the say. Wrong Not thing. your will, God. Not your will, God. That's what a man who doesn't want to submit. But for mm-hmm. him to have a heart posture of humility and submission before God, mm-hmm. you will see that played out in how he responds to the authority. So that is a huge indicator in how you can evaluate his character. Okay, a few other topics that we cover in this PDF, and I'm not going to go into all of them because I think it's really important for you to grab this and actually work through it Mm -hmm. and really consider these scriptures that we have referenced, really consider the questions, like pull out a journal, really dig into this. I mean, this is life altering of the person you choose to marry. Um, And, you know, it starts with dating. So Mm -hmm. that's why it's super important to be careful about dating. Okay. So we talked about salvation. We talked about church. We talked about family. We talked about authority. Um, Another area is instruction. How does he respond to correction and instruction in his life? You're going to dig into that inside the PDF. Work. What kind of work ethic does this guy have? Um, Marriage. What does he believe about marriage? Sexual purity. Does he value sexual, value, Mm -hmm. value sexual purity and fight for it? Identity. Where does he find his identity? Sin. How seriously does he take sin in his life? And more. And so if you're like, wow, I really need to dig into this. Like, I need to take some time to seriously consider this stuff for reals, y'all. Um, You've got to grab this guide, how to discern a guy's true mm-hmm. character. And like Kristen said, I mean, this is something that we, I mean, we were thoughtful as we were dating. Yeah, for sure. Like, for sure. And I mean, at that point, I think I I was probably more thoughtful since I got married later than you, right? I had so many more years. Probably. Because like at that point, we had written Love Defined. We had written Sex Creating the Longings of a Girl's Heart like before I got married. Um, And so I view that as such a huge blessing Mm -hmm, in my life mm -hmm. because there were things that I was forced to think about more deeply that I hadn't to that extent. One of the biggest things though, Mm -hmm. just like on a practical level, if you're like, okay, give me some nitty gritty, like for you too, what were you looking for? How did you discern your husband's character? You know, because I still wake up every day and I'm like, you know, praise the Lord. I feel like I made a great decision. (laughs) 
Praise the Lord. And like, thank you, Lord. You know, like I, I used to have this nightmare. Like what if I had settled and I woke up on the other side of marriage and was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I married this person, you know, but thankfully I've been able to wake up and say, hallelujah, you know, and it doesn't mean Dave and I are perfect. It doesn't mean we have a perfect relationship, but the character is there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Kristen's always laughing. Dave and I definitely do not agree on everything. Like we have very different of opinions on a lot of stuff. Um, and like my personality, I'm just kind of like, okay with that. And Dave too, we're like, okay, well, we're two different people. We are a family and (laughs) you know, we're raising our kids. We're in church together, but we definitely think differently on a lot of stuff. But the reason I wanted to marry him and the reason I was excited about dating him is because of this one thing. I saw that he was a man of integrity. He was a man who did what he said he was going to do. He was a man like of his word. And I knew that whether I was in his life or not, he was going to live a certain way. And I I didn't, I wasn't like a, a mother to him. I wasn't the one pulling him in to do mm-hmm. the right thing. I knew that he was doing the right thing because he wanted to honor the Lord and because he had personal conviction for himself. He wanted to be a man who was like, if I say I'm going to do something, if I say I'm going to live a certain way, I will do that. Um, and to this day, he still, it's like mind blowing to me because it's like, I like, you know, it's like the one-year Bible. You know, like, we all, a lot of us commit to that, and it's really hard to get through sometimes. Like, you get to the Leviticus, and you're like, oh, man, I'm already quitting, and it's like, we're barely into the year here. It's like, Dave is one of those people, like, whatever he says he's going to do, mm. he absolutely does it. And so, whatever he commits to, I'm like, are we sure we've thought about this, you know? Because, like, he <laughs> will commit to it. it yeah, like, any one-year Bible that he's committed to absolutely finished it. Wow. Anything he says to me, like, I know that it will happen. And honestly, that was so huge for mm. me, because I had been in previous relationships, where the man was not a man of integrity Mm -hmm. and his word was not final. I couldn't have that level of trust. And I just think there's something so amazing about being with a guy where you know, if I weren't in his life, he would follow the Lord and he would do the right thing because Mm. that's who he is as a man. That's his character. He's a man of integrity. Um, And so honestly, that's like the number one thing that drew me to Dave. Obviously, we were sexually attracted and I liked him. Um, But the most important thing was that I was like, yes, like I've seen this because He had been living on his own for a while. He had been through some pretty difficult stuff with his own family. Um, And I just, the way he responded to those difficult circumstances, the way that he sought out um, mentorship from other godly men, it was so inspiring to me. And I was like, that's the kind of man I want to marry. Mm -hmm. Knowing when hard times Mm -hmm. hit, this is the way he reacts. Like, yes, sign me up. Um, And so that, that's ultimately what, what like, I don't know what to clinch the deal. <laughs> That's sealed ultimate. the deal. Sealed the deal. Yeah. Um, and it was that character. It's a character yeah, yeah. issue. And so that's what we're looking mm-hmm. for. Like, like I said, Dave and I have a lot of differing perspectives. You know, even when it comes to stuff, I share personal convictions. He doesn't share every conviction I share on here. You know, he'll listen to something and be like, oh yeah, I don't really agree with that. And I'm like, oh, I, I probably knew that. And we're just like, <laughs> okay. So it's not like conviction issues or preference issues. It's the character of the person. And some mm-hmm. of us get confused thinking that our our way is the way of character. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Only. Like, my way is the right way, though. But it's that humility of saying, yeah. okay, does he want to live for the Lord? Does he want to have a heart of integrity? Right. Does he want to do what he says he's going to do? That's what attracted me yes. to Dave, ultimately. What about you? Well, I want to first say that it can feel overwhelming. Like, even looking at a list like this, or even working through the questions that you and Dave worked through, which you didn't mention. I oh, thought you yeah, were. Yeah, 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 I forgot about um, this. We had come out with this Early on in Girl Defined, it was like 100 and what, 36 36 questions, questions. which many of you have heard about, but we've now turned it into 170 170 questions to ask in a romantic relationship, in a dating relationship. They are incredible. So you can get a PDF download of that or a physical card deck, which is so cool because as you're discerning his character by getting this other PDF, how to discern a guy's true character. And if you are seeing positive signs like what Bethany saw in her relationship with Dave, like, wow, this does seem like a godly man. I see follow through. I see the things he values. Like it's really what I'm seeing in his life, how he's living it. But you know that there's a lot of specific things that you want to work through because preferences aren't necessarily make or break it, but they could be right? Yeah, they matter. There could be theological differences that do matter so much that you need to know that or the way you both think about family or the future or children or what matters with career or where you're going to live. Like so many practical things that you also need to talk about that aren't in this guide for how to discern his character. Um, You can get those in this question box, this card deck, and you can literally sit there, go out on dates, you know, grab coffee, just have a picnic and you can work through a couple of them. I know one couple recently, they worked through like the entire card deck, (laughs) like a couple dates. I do not. Okay. I do not not recommend that whenever I hear that people do whoever this couple is it's, it's okay because I, I know people like that too I'm like the point is to really dig into these and unpack them if you are literally discussing them in like one date or a couple days you're not 
giving it justice. But the point isn't to agree on every single right. card. Because like I said, you're not yeah. going to be in 100% agreement with everyone. It's deciding the differences that you're okay with, you right. know? So there might be some like, okay, maybe you're, you've always dreamed of having a big family. And he's like, hard stop at two. Absolutely no more. I can never see myself having a big family. That could be a deal breaker for you mm-hmm. where you're like, no, like I want to leave this open to the Lord. Or maybe in the future you want to homeschool or whatever that is for you. Right. You may have, it's not necessarily like a biblical, this is what the Bible says about that. But for you, it's such a big deal that that is a deal breaker and it's a preference that it's a deal breaker. So it's not everything. If you and him have differences on the questions, that's okay. But you have to know what the deal breakers are and what's not. And that will come up as you're having conversations, as the questions bring these conversations up. Because sometimes it's hard to think of all the things that are important to talk about. (laughs) And you don't want to marry someone before you've talked about some of the really important things. And then you get on the other side of marriage like, wait, what? You believe what? You want to have no kids? What? (laughs) Totally. You want to talk about this and the, the card deck makes it easy for you. It like basically guides you through all of the different categories so that you don't have to think of them on your own. And it's not you yeah. like coming up, <clears throat> coming at him with questions. It's like a neutral source totally. in a way, asking questions of both of you. So you're for both sure. answering. So it's just a beautiful way to like dig deeper and get to know what each of you believes. But that's an aside. The other that's thing. That's at the Girl Defined shop too though. Yeah, yeah. Dating resources, deck. digital resources. Yes. And then there's the digital version of the card deck. Um, but what I want to say is that it can feel overwhelming almost like working through the questions or this discerning his character. You are not looking for a man of perfection. We just need to say that. You are looking for a man of direction. And we say that in Ooh. this PDF on discerning his character because that's the point. None of us have arrived at a place of perfect maturity, of perfect godliness, right? And we never will this side of heaven. So you're not looking for a man who is like 60-year-old godly pastor with years of experience and trials and weathered the storms and walk with the Lord. Like, he's not going to be that, right? He's going to be a young man, younger in his faith, right? So you want to have the right perspective. You're looking to see in these areas, these important biblical areas, does he have a heart that is moving in the direction of valuing these things? Of even if he's like a newer believer, like where's his heart? Is he pursuing these things? Does he see them as important? Is he teachable? Does he want to learn? You know, those are the things that you're looking for. And I think that is a huge distinction. Yeah. He's not going to be perfect. For he's sure. not going to have perfection, but where is his direction? And that will be very evident as time goes on. You need time to be able to see his patterns, yeah. to be able to see his history. What does his life look like over the past couple of years? Where's he at now? Where's he moving forward in? Um, what direction is he going? And is it the right direction, a direction that you want to get behind? Yeah. That you want to link arms with and move forward in life with? I mean, that's so important. Yeah. So for me, the biggest thing that came to mind, I think for Zach, when we were dating, um, I was very physically attracted to him. So that kind of probably blinded me in some ways because I already had a huge crush on him Thanks. even right after I first met him. Thankfully, he turned out to be a great guy. He did. But I don't think I would have married him if he had like a million no, red flags. For sure. I mean, I was still surrounded by great community and like godly parents who were still invested and cared about that part of my life. And I'm thankful for that. And well, and everyone a sister who probably would have told me. Did you? <laughs> well, what's funny is like right before Zach spoke up for like Kristen's I don't know, (laughs) courtship, dating, whatever it was back in the day. I had, he had been around and I could tell, we all could tell, like he was interested in Kristen, but he wasn't speaking up. And I was just like so over it because I, we're super close in age. We're super close. And so it was like sister friend, like this guy's causing so much emotional problems by not speaking up. And he's younger than her too. So he was like, you know, barely finishing. 21. And I was maybe 20. Two or three. Yeah. When so we was, actually started dating. The day before he officially spoke up, I remember to Kristen, like, we're over this Zach Clark yes. guy. Like, forget him. Move on to other options. Just because, you know, we were like, he wasn't speaking up on the timeline we thought, which was hilarious. And then the next day he did speak up and we were like, oh. And the rest is history. I forgot. You like literally gave me a sister pep talk speech. Like, you don't need to worry about this guy anymore. Put him to the past. And we Move called him on. Clark back then. It was always Clark. like, forget Clark. <laughs> His last name. No, but one of the things that he was young, but he was, he realized that he didn't know everything. And like, he was very teachable, I guess is what I'm getting at. And that he was seeking the, the, um, the counsel, the wisdom and advice, even yeah. for our relationship. And even though like h- him and his parents, like they didn't always see eye to eye. One thing I was very impressed with was the way that he respected his parents and that he respected their opinion in his life. Like, you know, he was young and he still had a lot of school to finish. He wasn't in any position financially to like get married and have a family. And his parents were seeing that. And so they were like, Hey, you should really finish school. You should try to like get a job, you know, before you pursue this girl and get all entangled in this relationship. You know, what's your end goal? Like, what's your plan here? And as a guy, like he was very interested in pursuing me, but he was patient. 
And he was willing to wait and be patient and like finish school and get a job and all of the things that the the advice and counsel that he was receiving that even though uh, at the time I was very impatient, like what's wrong with this guy? Why like, isn't he sprinkling Why up? isn't he like asking me out today? You know, because I felt like I was ready, but he wasn't in a place where he was ready yet. And at the time it felt frustrating to me. But looking back, I realized, man, that guy had a lot of patience. Yeah. Like he wasn't willing to just disregard all of the advice in his life and rush forward to get what he wanted yeah. because it's what he wanted. He was willing to listen to sound counsel from the people who loved him, who were speaking wise words into his life. And he was willing to be patient and even trust that if somehow in the meantime, I like started dating someone else, which actually happened, um, that if God had us for each other, that God would like that would happen in the right timing. Like he even trusted that. So I really looking back, admire that about him and seeing how he handled the authority um, because there had been other guys in my life who did not respond to authority in the same way. They always felt like they knew better. You know, it was their timeline. They were more like, like, I want what I want when I want it, you know, kind of thing. And so to see that in him was a huge character quality that I admired. And then, like I said, his teachability. Because if a man is not teachable For when he's sure. young, like that is actually going to be such a detriment to your marriage, to your entire life, because he's going to be a very difficult person to live with. If he is not willing to hear hmm. the advice and counsel of others, his pastor, godly men, like <laughs> that is not someone you want to move forward with. Like you want now. a man who is teachable because that kind of heart posture, like he will be a man that is guaranteed to grow and to mature because he's he wants to hear the wise counsel. He is open to that. He's pursuing that he is he has a heart of humility like that is that is who you want so I saw that in him and those were just a few of the things and I'm very grateful that even to this day I still see that patience in him I still see that teachability in him like those character qualities are still evident after 12 years of marriage um and I'm just so thankful for that foundation that he had then still has it today so yes like (laughs) marriage is forever like you want to be so intentional about the dating process and if you're a married woman you know that yourself so even more reason to speak into the lives of your friends who are dating your friends who are single to say hey girl I got this pdf for you let's talk about it let's work through it together or grab a copy of love defined or hey you're dating have you asked hard questions grab the card deck from girl defined like like recreate these resources because they're things that we have found helpful in our own lives or we have found helpful like we've seen our friends use them we want to create resources that will help you honor God and how you walk through some of these really important areas and help you like guide you in making wise decisions, really setting yourself up for like success now and for your future, like for a God honoring marriage. So I mean, outside of salvation, I really think the person who you choose to marry will impact your life the The most, most. you know, and there is hundred percent, you know, a couple that um, I know and they're going, they got divorced like a year ago and the whole situation is so sad. And so just, you know, all of this and you just want to rewind and time and wonder like, okay, you know, clearly the character was there many years ago and you just, you, you hope to save other single people from ending up with someone who has such a low character and, you know, stop making the excuses, stop pretending that everything is going to be okay. We can look around and see enough relational destruction to know Mm. that it doesn't just work out. Stop assuming that your relationship is the one exception. That's how everyone thinks like, well, our relationship is the exception because we are just like, we're just so in love. You know, it's like, that's what gets you into a place of a lot of trouble, you know, and obviously the Lord can redeem and the Lord is so gracious and God is so gracious to give us so many second chances, you know, and like to use Mm -hmm. us, we're all so broken and flawed and in need of him. And like, that's what's so amazing. But he also gives instruction and wisdom. So have a heart of humility Mm -hmm. as you're pursuing these dating, this dating relationship or future dating relationships. Seek advice, dig into the PDF, you know, grab the resources at girldefined.com slash shop. You can instantly download them and just know that we are here to walk life with you. That's why we, you know, create this podcast. That's why we have the Girl Defined website, the Girl Defined podcast, the Girl Defined Instagram or mm-hmm. YouTube channel because we want to be sisters linking arms saying, hey, like we are all women of God trying to do the right thing here. Let's help each other out. So make sure you stay connected with us. Go to Instagram.com slash Girl Defined or at Girl Defined. We really want to stay connected with you on a day-to-day basis and really offer you hope and encouragement. And yeah. when you're feeling weak or like, oh, I don't know if I can do this, like, 
come on over, you know, watch some videos, make a, you know, comment, send an email, do whatever you need to do to really link arms with us and have that community. And if you have made it till the end, please <laughs> leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, because that literally makes all the difference for who hears about this podcast. And if we should keep going, if we never get comments, then <laughs> nobody's listening. We can't keep going. So please, please let us know you're here. Let us know. Are there any topics that are going on mm. in your life that you really want us to dig into? You can leave that as a comment on the podcast as a review. Like we read those every single one. We love you all. And we will see you again in the next episode. Hey!